Hello guys, we are here inside a wind tunnel. This is a wing and as we all know, when airplanes fly, they create vortices that create drag. So we have decided to put a propeller ahead of the wing that is going to create a vortex that is going to cancel the wing one. So I wonder what is going to happen to the drag? Let's do it. Hello guys, this is Sergio and Santi and we are here for the Veritasium challenge. Yeah, the idea would be to try to reduce the drag created by an airplane by a new crazy way. Yeah, because as we all know, uh, reducing drag is uh, something really, really important in aeronautical engineering. And for doing it, we have came here to our old university where we both studied uh, aeronautical engineering. We are going to use the wind tunnel to test this new crazy idea. So let's do it. First, there are some concepts that we want to make sure are understood. When an airplane is flying at a constant speed, the force done by the engines to push the aircraft is exactly the same as the force of drag. The larger the drag, the larger must be the thrust in order to fly at a certain speed, and an increment in thrust always comes with more fuel consumption. That is why a reduction in drag will allow the airplane to fly at the same speed with less thrust. Then less fuel will be consumed, so less pollution will be emitted, passengers will pay less for their flight tickets, making air transport accessible for more people, what will require more airplanes, and airplanes manufacturers will have more work to do, and so on and so forth. But when thinking on airplanes, there is a big difference between them and any other ground transportation method. For example, let's examine a car. The drag associated to it comes in two ways. The first one is that as the car moves, it pushes air out of its way, and behind the car, as it passes through air, the air goes back filling the gap led by the car. That is what is called the pressure drag, because there is higher pressure at the front than behind the car, and that difference in pressures creates a force against the car. The second drag method has to do with friction. The layers of air near the car get influenced by the velocity of the vehicle, so the air that at the beginning was at rest accelerates due to the interaction with the moving car, and by Newton's third law, if the car is accelerating the air, the air will create a force with the opposite direction to the car. That is what is called friction drag. Both these types of drags form the parasitic drag. But airplanes have another way of drag, completely different, the induced drag. It is called like that because it's the drag induced by the lift force. So whenever any object creates lift, it will generate induced drag. Let us tell you why. Yeah, so we have a wing here and as we all know from the previous video, uh, when an airplane flies, uh, there will be more pressure on the lower part of the wing than on the upper part of the wing. So uh, on the wing tip, where the wing ends, the air will experience a force upwards because there is more pressure on the lower part of the wing. So the air will go up, but as well, there will be less pressure on the upper part of the wing than the ambient pressure. So as the air is going up, as well it's going to experience a force in this direction. So as you see, as you can see, this creates some, something like a vortex going up and turning in this direction. And as the wing passes, the vortex will stay here spinning. The idea that we showed in the Veritasium Challenge 1 minute video is that there is a way to reduce the intensity of those vortices. But here in this video we are testing it to see if it does work or not. We are here in our old uh, wind tunnel. This is the wing that we are going to, to use to check this uh, crazy stuff. These are the dynamometers that we are going to use to, to measure the forces involved here. And we are going to check to, we are going to try to reduce this part of the, of the wing vortex, the steep vortex, okay? So, first of all, it's important to know that to create a vortex, some energy is needed, and that means drag, basically. So, it's very important to try to reduce this vortex, to reduce the energy involved in this process, and to reduce the drag, okay? It's also important that, to know that when you increase the angle of attack, of the wing, the vortex starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So, vortex uh, are involved, very involved with drag when you have very high angles of attack or, or when you increase the angle of attack. Here, it's important to clarify that the intensity of the vortices depends on the difference in pressure of both upper and lower parts of the wing, and those pressure difference increase when flying at higher angle of attack. So, the higher the angle of attack, the higher will be the vortices intensity. Okay, so the way to, to reduce uh, 
uh, this vortex will be to put this engine here and to create another vortex in the opposite direction and same magnitude we are going to to play with the the engine rpms and we are going to try to cancel the wing vortex with the vortex that it's created by this engine with the help of the dynamometers we are going to measure the forces and we are going to try to see if this uh, helps or not to the drag okay another way if you come over here you will see the cords that are above the wing and at the tip these cords are used to check the stalls of the wing and also to check the vortex at the tip okay so when a vortex appears these uh, cords start moving so if we create another vortex with the engine to cancel the wing vortex we are going to try to see if these cords stop moving also okay so let's do it let's start checking at this point we first measured the drag experienced just by the wing without operating the propeller then we placed the propeller and started the test we tried to play with the speed of the propeller to cancel the wing vortices but as we can see in the videos it seemed like the vortices were not being cancelled out so after taking some measurements we decided to place the propeller behind the wing and take some measurements as well just to see what happened then we gather all the results on this excel and as you can see when the propeller was ahead of the wing drag increased opposite at what we expected we did the test for different wind speed velocities just in case it had an influence on the results but apparently not for the case where the propeller was behind the wing there was no difference in drag at all as if the propeller for being behind the wing had no influence on the drag it kind of makes sense because whatever the propeller does to the wing vortices they have already been created by the wing so it won't change anything it's the right moment to say that this way of reducing drag was not our own idea we saw it on different investigations and all of them have the same conclusions drag decreases not just by a little bit for example here they talk about up to 50 percent reduction in drag for high angles of attack it's a huge reduction so why our results are not the same even though we have tried exactly the same there is a big difference uh, between this paper and our experiment and is that the uh, propeller and the wing in the paper uh, they were attached and as you have seen in our experiment they were uh, separated i mean the propeller uh, was ahead of the wing and we think that the propeller uh, creates a slipstream that collides against the wing and that creates extra drag yeah. uh, and in the case of these guys they have a, the, the propeller attached to the wing and the forces involved in there are very different from the forces that we have because we have a propeller totally disconnected from the wing exactly. they have a propeller connected to the wing exactly so if there could be the problem in there what we wanted to say here is that if you connect the propeller to the wing and you measure the forces of the whole body, if the propeller accelerates air that later collides against the wing, this will have an effect of reducing the thrust generated by the propeller. But as we performed the experiment, we were not taking into consideration the thrust of the propeller. So even if the wind drag had decreased due to the reduction of vortices intensity, the total drag that we were measuring could have been larger due to the effect of this slipstream. The correct way of measuring would have been taking into consideration as well the thrust generated by the propeller. In summary, the experiment could have worked but the problem was our way of measuring it. It was simply impossible to notice if it was working or not just by measuring the drag of the wing. This test must measure the propeller attached to the wing somehow. But here it comes a bigger and in fact the biggest problem. Once we realized that the wing vortices were not being cancelled by the vortex of the propeller, we decided to put a piece of wool and to check how strong was the vortex created by the propeller. And for our surprise, there was no vortex. There is just a lot of turbulence. So, why the propeller doesn't create a vortex? Well, the vortex generated depends on the pitch of the propeller and in our case it was a fixed one with so little angle but if we have a look to the different studies the propeller always has much more pitch angle also it is important to remark that in order to cancel the wing vortices the propeller should be aligned with the core of the wing at low angles of attack it could be neglected but not for high angles of attack so as you can see this is our first video together 
uh, we are going to try to, to do here a great uh, channel with uh, a lot of stuff regarding aviation and science. Um, yeah, we are aeronautical engineers. We yeah. were uh, classmates for the whole degree. And we have been doing some crazy stuff about aviation, like going to spotting airplanes or trying, no, well, creating a wind, um, a smoke wind tunnel. Yeah, we could make a video about that yeah. later on. Yeah. Sergio here has a channel in Spanish, so the ones of you that want to try to learn a bit of Spanish or if you know uh, Spanish, you could check uh, his channel. No, but as you can see, we are not English speakers, native speakers, so please take it into consideration and subscribe to this new channel and yeah, think supersonic. <laughs>